Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR with the basics from the Ham Tech Library on making an HF contact. So you've got your license, you've either upgraded or 10 meters is really open as a technician, and you're getting in there and wanting to make some contacts, you're getting ready to go out for a field day, you're going to help out in a QSO party, whatever it is, you're going to need to make an HF contact at some point in time. We'll take you through all the basics you need to know here uh, in the Ham Tech Library. And the first off is listen, listen, listen. And it's really good, not just because you're listening to hear somebody calling CQ, but you want to get their pattern. So uh, they may call CQ, talk to somebody, and do one or two back and forths before they call CQ again. Understanding that keeps you from jumping in on somebody else's contact. So wait for the CQ, CQ before you jump in and really make sure you're kind of fully listening. I heard a contact the other day where somebody was calling CQ, CQ, and now I'm going to work some DX. And before he could get the rest of it out of his mouth, somebody was jumping in with their call sign and it really wasn't a person he was looking for. So make sure you're fully listening before you step down and uh, uh, key up that mic, whether you're pushing your foot pedal or your hand mic, uh, fully listen before you key up and make that contact. So you're ready to call and respond to that CQ. Use phonetics when you call the person. So uh, you're not going to throw out your call sign as N4BFR on HF. You're going to do your full ITU phonetics. November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Romeo. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do that every time. Lots of times, for example, I like to say November 4, Bravo, Fox, Romeo. I'll abbreviate that. And sometimes when they're hard to hear, they just are not getting your call sign from the way you're saying it. That's the time when you go in and use other... Uh, uh, phonetics. So I might say uh, Norway for Berlin, France, Russia as a way to replace that. Or now for Big Fun Radio. It kind of breaks things up in their head a little bit when you say it differently. But when you're calling first, at least as someone who's called CQ a lot, I'm expecting people to come back with their ITU phonetics. And it does kind of throw me off a little bit when it's, uh, you know, Lindsay Sugar uh, Radio or whatever they might do. So, um, Use ITU phonetics when you're uh, using your call sign. It's a really good practice to get into uh, as you're making contacts here on HF. If they respond to somebody who else, uh, if they're calling CQ and they respond to somebody else, so I'm making a contact, uh, I called N4BFR phonetically, and they said, oh, wait, let me go ahead and uh, work uh, Kilo Echo for Charlie. Please come back. Okay, that's your opportunity to wait and listen and be the next person. And again, wait for them to say CQ uh, or QRZ. QRZ means, hey, I'm finished with this contact. Wait for them to say those kind of things before you jump in. Because if you try and jump in in the middle of their QSO, all you're doing is making it longer for everybody else. So let them work their QSO naturally, uh, and then you can jump in and uh, have your turn. Try again when they call CQ again. Uh, but all right, so you've done that and you've been patient. And finally, that distance station hears you. You got them. Here's what you want to do. Uh, they're going to say, all right, November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Romeo, go ahead. And you're going to say, hi, my name is November 4, Bravo, Foxtrot, Romeo. You are 5-9 or whatever the signal report is in Georgia. I use Georgia. Sometimes I use Metro Atlanta. It depends on kind of who I'm talking to and where I'm talking to. Uh, and my name is Jim. And why I do that is by giving them the signal report, which is something you always want to give, uh, but by giving them my name and a general location. Now, if they're looking me up online at the same time they're making this contact, they see, okay, there's Jim. He's in Georgia. That ties with the call sign I have. So I must be working the right person. So it's another way of double checking and making sure you've got that uh, basic exchange. Now, they may want to chat and they may want to have other things. Some may want different specifics. So if you're working a six meter contact, they're probably going to ask you for your grid square. Check out that video and you can uh, understand a little bit more about that. Uh, other specifics people may ask for, they like to ask for the weather a lot. What radio are you, are you using? doesn't really make a difference uh, what they want. Just, uh, you know, have a nice exchange. Now, once you've kind of given the 5-9, 
and the uh, basic info, you're in the discussion part of the contact. So anything else after that is really just, you know, talking amongst yourselves, which is definitely something I recommend. So just uh, sit and chat amongst yourselves and have a good time. You can have a QSO as short as long as you want. Uh, my first one was with somebody in Canada. Uh, we talked about airplanes. It was really cool. Uh, I still remember it, even though it was 12 years ago. So uh, if you're out there making your first contact, um, you don't have to be chatty, but generally the person on the other end uh, will be ready to uh, have a chat with you. And as, uh, as somebody answering or calling CQ, Answering those things and kind of helping people out and making it easy for them to make their contacts uh, is always a great thing to do. So be prepared to talk amongst yourselves as you're making that contact once you've exchanged the basics. When you're getting all done and wrapping it up, you want to make sure you log that contact. And I've got a whole video about logging, but the really important thing on logging for this perspective is Somewhere down the road, you may want to either confirm that contact with a QSL card, and I've got information on that, or you may want to uh, have enter yourself for awards like Worked All States, Worked All Continents, DXCC. In order to do that, you need to have a good log that you can go back and confirm them in a different way. So uh, in order to get one of those awards, you're going to have to exchange cards or do logbook of the world in order to do that. It all starts with keeping a log. So check out the video on keeping a log, and that'll give you a little bit more information there. But please write down those contacts. I definitely encourage that. Once you do that, you're all done. And you're plus one towards your DXCC or your worked all states. By the way, U.S. counts, even if you live in the U.S., U.S. counts as plus one towards DXCC. So why not count that as well? So uh, you've got one, one down, 99 to go, or one state down to 49 to go. Both of those are a lot of fun awards to get. So uh, you may want to play with that. And we'll get into awards uh, in a future video. But that's all I have to say about making HFQSOs at the moment. Now, this may not be the only way to do it, but I certainly hope it gets you started. I hope this video helped you. If it did, please send it along to a new ham who may find it beneficial. Uh, and like and subscribe, of course. We always appreciate that. In the meantime, I hope to catch you on the air, 73 for now, from the Hamtech Library. <laughs>